Hello, how are you guys doing? Today we are going back to tutorial mode. Last few videos we discussed few theories, concepts, architectural things, but today we are going to explore tutorial. We are going to learn windowing pattern. Windowing pattern we can use on stream processing or any kind of event processing. Especially if you want to reduce the load on the event or if you need to more smooth line proper manage event processing. Before we go there, I must say thank you for everyone who's really really engaging on these contents. Last few weeks, I saw like you're engaging a lot. You like, comment, and sharing, and also I got so many messages. Thank you very much for everything. And especially, some of you ask how you can pay for these videos. How you like you guys said like these videos are worth to pay. How you can pay? You don't have to pay, but what you can do is you can share these videos with your friends and people who are interesting on this content. You can get more subscribers and uh, to this channel and also. You can like, comment, and give your feedback about this content. So that would be really, really encouragement to do more content. So that would be the good payback. Anyway, so let's dive into the uh, tutorial. So windowing concept is something like this. Let's say you have an event emitter which emit uh, thousands of events per minute, right? So probably location service, something uh, publishing their location or a person, so their altitude or something like that. I don't know anything. Right? Any concept, anything which is publishing event, maybe something like a database changes, anything. So what you're going to do is you open a window. Let's say it's a bucket. You open a bucket. You capture all the events which coming in uh, within the window and you close it and then you send it to process. What the processor can do is processor can do, uh, remove the duplicates events and do the processing for the distinguished event. Or else otherwise you can say something like this. So first event happened and the second event happened and the third event happened. You only need to process those events after all three events are happened, right? So then what you can do is you can capture the first event and then you can wait certain time and see whether the second and third events are happened and then you can send this to process, right? Because uh, processing the first event doesn't make any sense until the third event happened. So you can take this and wait until uh, third event happened. There are framework to do this type of thing like a beam. Apache beam framework is designed to do something like this. But beam usually doesn't fit for all your use cases because if you, if you can uh, publish this to Kafka, if you can uh, make the Kafka to manage this, then it's really hard you to figure it out to use a framework. So this video, what I'm going to take you through a custom implementation to how, show how you can do it, right? So in this example, what we are going to do is this. So you can see here in the zero minute, I'm opening a window. Right, so you can assume this from a cron job or something. Then it start to collect the events. So these events, you can see this purple color, it is filling the event. Right. So then you find an event which is not qualified to this window. In my use case, I only consider events happen 60 seconds before the current time. That means the window open time. And if the event occurred before 60 seconds, the window open time only I consider. So when I collect the events, I may get an event which is not completed the 60 seconds. So then I close the window and send the window to process. And then the, when the next minute come, then the new window open and that event will come to the next window. There are few challenges when you're doing this. For example, let's assume there are 55 events occurred during the, within the event. So now I'm collecting the event. So events are currently occurring itself, right? So now I'm getting the 56th event, which is let's say 58 seconds ago. So that means I should not consume that. But Kafka already dispatched this event. So it won't dispatch again. So I need to tell Kafka, I didn't con consume this 56th event. So you need to give me that back, right? So that's one challenge. The second challenge may be your window is open, right? So during this window, uh, window bleed, bleed into the next window. Because even when the second window open, your first window is not closed yet. The events are keep coming, right? So therefore, before you open the second window, you need to make sure the first window is closed and processed. So there are something like that. But th that depends on your use case. Sometimes you may need to uh, close the first window and process it. Or else, maybe you need to let the first window open until the invalid event come. Something like that. But it completely depends on your use case. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the window and open a new window. And when you close the window and open a new window, there can be a marginal case where if the event comes, this event may lose, right? So to that, you need to manually handle it to prevent that. So in this diagram, that's what you're showing, right? So you get the event closed and then you open a new event. 
So I'm going to show you the code now, right? I code I already implemented. So I'm going to uh, take you through the code because this is this is not magical thing to implement. This, this concept is the important. If you get this code, you have a scheduler uh, service, right? So scheduler service is the cron job, which is handling. I, I'll first explain you through the classes, then I'll explain you uh, one by one. And then you have a Kafka controller, right? I'll explain why we need this. And then you have Kafka service, right? And also they have a window. So this is the structure. So this is the window class, right? So there you have a ID, start time, close time, event, and it's freeze to see whether the window is frozen or not. So why we need this? We need before we uh, close the current window, before you go to the next window, you need to make sure window is freeze and we should not add any more event to this window, right? So to do that, we have this. In the process one, uh, we just like uh, console log, but this can be like uh, sorting these things and like sending this to Kafka or caching on a Redis, whatever you want to do, right? And the closing window close. The important thing is when you implement something like this, you following double OP concepts, right? Because for example, window open and closes belongs to window. Right, the window processes belongs to window, so you need to give the responsibility of that class to that uh, class itself as a method. Right, so these are the behaviors. Right, process and close. Right, open I didn't bring here because open is nothing but just creating a new object. Right, let's go into deep. So what we are doing here, so this is a cron job. Right, it occurs in every minute. So then it put uh, print the log saying a job started, and then it go to the start window. What the start window does is, it just see whether the current window is active, right? If the current window is active, it says window, uh, there is a window already open and that is the current record count for that window. And then it said to the window to freeze. That means the collecting service know this window is freeze, I cannot give any more events to this one. And then it uh, execute the close current window method. So what the close current window method does is, it says closing is initiated and then the current window is already open anyway because this, okay. So now you can say this is a redundant check, right? Why this window here is also we are checking. But the importance is this is a separate method. You should be able to call it from somewhere else, right? So that's why uh, we have this check and then it close the current window to close, right? So if you go to this one, current window to close, Right, it says uh, it check the if we have any any length, right? It says first set the closing time, and if there is any event within that window, the event is event is processing, right? Event process, you know um, how that works, right? We saw that so each and every event, right? For each, we lock the event, right? So that is what it does, right? So this process is now over. So now we go here. So now what we do is we open a new window, right? And we open a new window. And then we set the window ID and the start type and the we initialize the events and say window open. Here you can see I have binding two methods, right? You can see add event to current window and we are binding this implementation, right? And close current window, we are binding this implementation, right? And is window frozen, we bind in this implementation. So why I need to bind those? Because I need to execute those from my Kafka service. So now after that, the start window is complete. Now I'm going to uh, execute the resume consumer. So resume consumer is belongs to Kafka service. Okay, let me explain the Kafka service as well. So I have a topics and everything initialized during the constructor. It like uh, create connected to the brokers and everything. And on module init, we just uh, connect and subscribe. A producer, I'm really not going to use it, but though it's connecting. So now we go to consume message method and here you can see consumer run on each message. What I do is I get the current uh, date first to get the current time and then I get the message timestamp and I uh, subtract from the current timestamp and get the time difference from the message occurred and the current time. See the pseudo implementation, this is fine, but uh, if you when you go to the real implementation, you need to consider the window open time here because in the window you have a property called window uh, open time, current time, right? If you remember, when you open the window, we put that. So that is the idea you should get here because otherwise this is like uh, changing in each time, right? But again, it, that depends on your business use case. Now, what is our logic? 
our logic is if the message time and the current time is the time difference is greater than 60 second we take that message to process if it is not we are closing the window and send the current message is collected message to process right so that's what we do here we see the time difference is less than 60 seconds and the window is not paused still and then we get the last offset this is very important why we get the last offset and then uh, we post the consumer and we said the post is true and we close the window right do you remember what happened in the close window if not we see if the window is frozen right so remember why window is frozen window is frozen because next window is open but still current window is running so then the, uh, the cron job will close this current window so if the, if the window is frozen not frozen sorry we create event object and add event to the uh, event window right if not what we do is we get the last offset like a previous time and the consumer pause and the is pause true but this time we don't process it right we don't process it okay so now here what's the difference so why we need this mess last offset because as as you remember last time i explained let's say you find you captured 55 message this is the 56th message this 56 message is still the current time and the message time difference is 58 seconds. So now I need push this to next window, right? So I keep that offset in memory. So then when I open the window, right? When I open the window again, what I do is I see if I have a last offset set. If there is a last offset set, I seek the message and get that from here. So that means technically, since the 56 message is already dispatched, Kafka will send from the 57 message onward on the next window. But I explicitly tell Kafka, no, you need to send me from the 56 message. That is the way we use the seek command, right? And then uh, you uh, you resume, right? So this is this is on the resume consumer, right? And these are these three events. I put this as a comment. We are not implemented this here. These are the methods we bind it from the window. Uh, sorry, uh, the the cron job class, right? So that's it. That's a very simple implementation. Okay, but uh, to um, get this run, what I need to do is what I did was so here I have a produce message, but I'm not using that directly. What I do is I create a controller, right? Here you can send the start and the stop, right? When you send the start, it will uh, start produce the message. When you send the stop, it will stop to produce the message, right? So let's run this. So meantime, let me do open the browser. So right, so now you can see, um, we need to wait until times comes to zero. You can see, um, so consumer started, previous window is not there. So it's closed the window, window closed, previous window is undefined. So new window open. So I'm going to produce some messages now, right? So it's start to produce the messages. Okay, so now if I stop the messages, you will see we stop the producing messages window closed, right? So here you can see um, offset zero, the time difference is 0 0.148. So therefore it is not eligible, right? It is not eligible for the window to process. Why? In order to process, it has to be greater than 60, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait here so you can see after this plus mark, wait here until the next window open. So ideally, the zeroth offset should consume by that window. Right, so now you can see next window open, right? So now still it's a 46 seconds, still it's not qualified, right? Still it's not qualified. So now we'll see, now let's wait to the next window. Right, now you can see here, right, so it processed, so now it is 107 seconds, right, because uh, we almost one and a half minute, uh, one and a half minutes. So now you can see from zero up to 94 it processed, right. So, but you can see here, only 94 messages it found, but it didn't find any message which is less than 60 seconds. So now it still is waiting on more messages to come. So now what will happen is then since there are no messages, it will wait until the next window open, right? Remember this is, right? So window is closing only two events. One, 
if the if it find a message which is less than 60 second if not it keep waiting and then next window will come and close the previous window so this is that scenario right now you can see the next window came right you can see it says 95 so now you can see from 0 to see 94 is also valid message so from 0 up to 94 it process right so that is the first scenario so second scenario is I'm going to open this again and I'm going to keep it open so now what will happen is when the next window open it fetch all the messages and also it will find a message which is less than 60 second then it will automatically close the window and pass that window to the next pass that message to the next window let's see that okay now you can think see why window is closed window is closed because just after uh, open the window it find a message which is less than 0 0.0 uh, less than 60 second which is 0 0.07 so that's why it closed the window but it's not processing anything so now it open the next window the first message is difference is 45 second still it's not qualified to process so now from the next window it will start to keep process because i didn't stop producing it keep producing i didn't stop it it will keep process until it get the message less than 60 seconds so now you you can see that right, if you check here so it it captured up until 500 uh, so now 503 message captured is a 60 second 504 message captured is a 59 second so technically 504 message should not print here see it only print up to 503 because 504 message is not qualified to print so now since I'm still pr uh, producing the messages, ideally 504 message should come in the next window. But you can see here, 504 message already came, right? See, 504 offset is already came, but we do the C, we are going to get it back, right? So let's see here. Let's wait for, until next window come. So now you can see it printed from 504, right? It, it printed from where it stopped. See? So now we demonstrate both scenarios. Scenario one, we get the messages, but last message is also uh, more than 60 seconds. So we are still waiting until the message comes, which is less than 60 seconds. But in the meantime, next window opens. So what it does is it closes the previous window and send to process. The scenario number two. I open the window, I collect the messages, but there is message I find which is less than 60 seconds. So then I close the window and I send this close to process. So it's a basic demonstration of windowing concept and how you can implement the windowing with uh, Kafka. So I'm going to push this uh, code to GitHub and I'm going to share the link on the video so you can go through the code also. But keep in mind, this is like almost production ready. This is not completely production ready. You need to test this, this window freezing uh, test case, window freezing use case, and also based on your current use cases. But you can use this pro uh, project as a kind of a baseline project and implement your use case. Yeah. <laughs>